Stand breaths, Hare Krishna. Stand breaths. Jai Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry, we don't have any electricity yes, again, mm. so we've got power outages. So I won't have my camera on because I can't see, you can't see anything here. Yes, yes, it shows black yeah. and in the recording it doesn't show well. Yes. <laughs> How I are you? Fine, fine. I hope everything will be fine there. It it lasts, you know how long it lasts? Was it well, an we, Oh, I don't know, but we have it like maybe three times a day. <clears throat> like and it lasts for about two, two and a half hours now before it was lasting for four hours. So yeah. Are you not are you not affected by those floods and things like that? Well, there was a hurricane here. Oh God. and it was uh, we are a peninsula. I am on the east. Yeah. Nothing happened on the east, but the west was terribly oh. damaged. And yeah. some areas are still without electricity. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. It's like all I, over the world, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And I hear you are going to Thailand. Well, I don't know. Let's wait and see because the flight is Monday the 10th. So I still don't know. Okay. Oh, man. You know, um, Lord Krishna loves drama. Uh huh. <laughs> so I'm experiencing drama. Let's, oh man, let's see. It, let's see. it is like that. It's like that before you have to leave. And that I know before I was getting ready to go to Italy, then we had all this with Kayla and her health. And, you know, and then it was also like, I'm going, we're not going. What's wrong? How's Kayla? Yeah, she's good. And uh, she had. I think she's diagnosed with an underactive thyroid. So yes, and the treatment starts from childhood. Is that Hashimoto? It, yes, it's Hashimoto, but it's not really common in children. But this, or oh, we picked up before we were going. To, I was going to Italy, so yeah, lots of drama. Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. Everything will be fine. Then mm. what? Good morning, obeisance. Yes, cha, creep us into be a cha, patitanam, pavanabio, Vaishnavabio, namo, namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Karadhara, Shri Vas Adi Gaurabhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Lin, welcome. And Hare Krishna Jayadev Prabhu, Leela Moi Prabhu, Rupanuga Prabhu, Radha Sondri Devidasi, Seva Rupa Devidasi, 
And last but not least, share, save account, Devi Dasi, Praneshwari, Govinda, Govinda. <clears throat> let us, let me make your picture bigger so I can see. Oh, it's the Mayapur Chandra Doya Mandir behind you. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Opened by Srila Guru Maharaj. Just see. With Guru Maharaj's lotus feet coming into the Chandra, Chandra Doya Mandir, at that time, Srila Prabhupada considered the temple is now open. No need for formalities. <laughs> the central temple out of I don't know how many temples and ashrams, uh, centers around the world, probably hundreds of ISKCON and Mayapur the crest jewel because it is and the central temple the headquarters it is the land of Mahaprabhu Hare Krishna and yes Jai Nitai welcome Lin and devotees very good so let us begin um, with Vandeham Sri Guruho and Namo Mahavaranyaya and sorry, Omagya, sorry, Omagya Antimarandasya, and then Namo Mahavaranyaya. We just chanted Vanchakalpa through Bhistra, even though Priyanan was not with us at that time. <laughs> okay, Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tang Sarivam Sadvaitam Savarutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Param Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitang Cha Om Ajnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshuran Melitam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Then? Huh? Namo Mahavaranyaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Tvije Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Arvaita Karadhara, Shri Vas Adi Kaura Bhatta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And you see, I'm also, I'm also a good example of how our mind can wander when we are doing something which is quite routine. Yes, Jai Dei Prabhu, Tandava. And my mind was wandering, where was it wandering? To Australia, to Rupa Nuga Prabhu, because I saw he looks cold, so I know he's back in Australia. It must be so. Is it? You're back in Australia, Prabhu? Your microphone, you have to click your microphone. I am back in Australia, yes, I am. In this bland society, but I am back here. <laughs> and it's cold. <laughs> And it's raining. But I'm with my grandchildren, so I'm a bit distracted, but that's all good. I'm traveling with my grandchildren, which is fun. All right. Well, I guess you are not in Bali anymore because you're wearing cold no. clothes. And yes. let the world know, I may be the only one to tell the world, but Australia is not always the hot place. It's uh, cut out to be in the surfing ads and everything else. Yeah, true. Actually, it can be remarkably chilly, even in summer. I, the first time I was there, it was Australians midsummer. It was the time of installation of the deities. I was surprised how cold was Australia. And down at the beach, all famous for surfers, they're all wearing the wetsuits because it's freezing cold, mate. <laughs> The things the ego has to go through, the kind of austerities it has to go through to be an ego of a surfer in Australia. Just see. Dear devotees, very welcome. And Nadia Priya, very welcome. Very welcome indeed. And um, I think we've greeted more or less the devotees one by one who are here. And 
Uh, we've got here Purushottam Prabhu. Mm -hmm. I didn't greet Purushottam Prabhu, who's right here with us. And maybe I didn't greet Braja Sundari. Mm -hmm. I think I did. Anyhow. Oh, you see, we've got Radha Sundari and Braja Sundari. Just see. So Braja Sundari, maybe I didn't reach. But we've got Purushottam Prabhu here. And today, if you remember from last Thursday or Wednesday in, in America and Brazil, perhaps, yes. Then last Wednesday or Thursday, depending on where you are, the last back to back to basics. Then we mentioned about the Chatur Shloki of Srimad Bhagavatam. And we read, in fact, the whole of the chapter. It's a short chapter that contains the Chatur Shloki. And we read the whole chapter because we actually were looking to see the context in which uh, Krishna or Narayan, in, actually it was Narayan who was talking, happened to be talking with Lord Brahma. But we wanted to see the context and that's why we just looked back and then we realized, well, we should read the whole chapter to get the context. So Purushottam Prabhu and Dibya Shakti, who is otherwise engaged right now, but was invited to attend, um, they are the cause for us focusing on the Chato Shloki this week. And so um, my question is, did anybody read the Chato Shloki and the full purports by Srila Prabhupada, as we suggested would be a good idea? Well, I'll put up a hand because I did. I read them. And I was also, I was also uh, very captured by uh, the, the, the verses and the purports. And so uh, what I would like to do is, because Purushottam Prabhu is the cause of us focus on, focusing <laughs> on the Chato Shloki, as it were, to first of all, invite him to say a few words, and he can just mention about the uh, discussion and reading together on the airplane and whatever he likes to say, but this will get us into the understanding of the importance of the verses and then we can come and, and discuss a little more. So I'll pass the microphone to Purushottam Prabhu. Okay. Dandavat, everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, yes, Maharaj is very encouraging. But, you know, we, Divya Shakti and I were reading and kind of studying the Chatu Shloki of the Bhagavatam on the way here from Salt Lake City. And uh, for personally, I just, um, I remember hearing about the Chatu Shloki for the first time coming to the, the Ma in Salt Lake City. Um, you know, Guru Maharaj has his commentary on the Gita, Chatu Shloki. And then we hear there's also a Chatu Shloki in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, I'm a little more familiar, obviously, being the essence of the philosophy, there's limitless amounts of substance that can be drawn from these shlokas. Uh, so it's more of just something a meditation just to uh, remember them and chant them, you know, when you have time. Well, I'm just saying you keep looking there because the screen's going to disappear. And so, yeah, it's just an interesting meditation. And, and Maharaj, you know, like he said, he read the uh, whole chapter and um, the context, a little bit of context. Did you go into that at all last time with Lord Brahma? Uh, no, no, we didn't. So this is very suitable. And so Maharaj actually told me um, and, you know, explained to me how, you know, Lord Brahma, he's in kind of a... Um, an existential crisis he can't see anything he's uh before his meditation and, and all that so um i think what were we talking about that brought that up uh well lord brahma he was he was born on the lotus and then he tried so much it was all dark everything was dark in the universe and then he tried climbing down the lotus he tried doing some meditation to understand why he's there. He tried doing tapasya austerities. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when he understood there's no, no way I can figure out what is the right thing to do, then, I mean, what is, what is what, what I should do, I can't understand anything. When he understood that he couldn't work it out by himself, he had no other way, he's done everything that he can think of to try to understand how to uh, realize 
where he is, what the purpose of his life is, etc. Then at that time, in complete darkness, with nobody else around to distract him also, then he just had to surrender to the Lord. And at that time, when he gave up all of his own attempt, the Lord came and revealed himself and explained to him. Mm. So in the, the time, Guru Maharaj points out, the, the time of great... Absolutely no other way. The greatest surrender, the greatest necessity, that time the Lord graciously may come to reveal himself. And he gives that example to Veda Vyas. After he compiled the whole of the Veda, then Veda Vyas is in also struggling so much within himself and everything. He's trying so much to understand what is missing. Why don't I feel that I've accomplished the duty I've been given, even though I have accomplished it, I've compiled the Vedas and I've done it all and everything like this, but something's missing. And then it wasn't just, oh, something's missing and then goes and turns on the TV and forgets about it or something, but something's missing. And he's seriously, sincerely trying to solve that. And finally, then he can't resolve. And then Narada Muni, his Gurudev appears, who happens to be Lord Brahma's son, then Narada Muni appears and then says, Vyasadeva, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> and then uh, from this comes the Chatur. Uh, from this comes, yes, so this came, the first time the Chatur Shloki came was maybe from Lord Brahma. Uh, wasn't this given? The, the, yeah, the four seed verses of Srimad Bhagavatam actually may have been revealed by Narada Muni, now come to think about it, to Vyasadeva. So, so this is how that manifests in the world. But Lord Brahma, in the beginning, these, you see the verses are taken at that time, great time of necessity, revealed to Lord Brahma. Oh, he, oh, I thought the Vishakti had come. <laughs> but we've got our Darya Leela, another devotee. We've probably woken them up without speaking. Right? <laughs> here's, here's our Darya Leela to join us. Come <laughs> so at the greatest time of necessity, so Lord Krishna Narayan revealed himself to Lord Brahma. And at the greatest time of necessity, then uh, Narada Muni came to Vyasadeva in order to give Indeed, these uh, shlokas to um, Vyasadeva, and then from there, the whole of the Srimad Bhagavatam has come out. So, right, I hadn't at the beginning put the two together, uh, only when we are talking just now and you're asking. Mm. But, oh, I'm not meant to be speaking. Purushottam Prabhu is meant to be speaking. Uh -huh. I think Narada Muni also had a time of desperation. Uh, when you know he was in meditation as well his mother had left him well his mother was taken from him by the lord's grace in narda muni's own perspective and he goes and uh travels for a long time and then ends up med in meditation and uh, the lord reveals himself to some extent and then is gone from narda muni's eyes and narda muni is very despondent that uh the Lord is no longer visible. So it seems that's a repeating, a repeating theme, this idea of true inner necessity and um, dependency and need for surrender. It seems like a consistent theme. And I've seen it in my own life a little bit too, to some extent. Um, when I, before I came to the mission and, uh, in Salt Lake City and came to know of Srila Guru Dev and Srila Guru Maharaj, um, I was searching desperately uh, for Srila Prabhupada. And I was telling this story to Audarya Leela just the other day. And uh, so you, we can see this in our own life. Um, was just very desperate looking for Srila Prabhupada um, the, and those who were following him. And I uh, was able to find that in the devotees. Uh, in Salt Lake City. And so you can see that prayers out of desperation and real necessity are heard. They are heard and answered. So Hare Krishna. So 
I've just compiled together and probably distracted Purushottam Prabhu so, completely. No, no. <laughs> so the first, the four shlokas, they are spoken by um, Narayan, correct? Maharaj? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And then they expand. I've heard that they expand every time they're, it's retold, it expands, you know, from Narada Muni, from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyasa, it expands like maybe four to eight to 16, something like that. All right, so let us come to the Chattel Shloki then, without further ado. And I just brought them together into one file. And um, so this one file, it's a text file. Then, what to get it into, to the world. You want to share the screen, Maharaj? Oh, well, that's something, but I just put it in the box, so... The Chato Shloki text is there. Um, Perfect. But if you, oh yes, if you like, I can share the screen. But ah, I have to practice. <laughs> share the screen. Advanced portion of the screen. Click share. Okay, well, there's something. But now let us come to here. Yeah. All right. Now you know what my computer looks like. Except. Hmm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. I wasn't ready for this. All right, dear devotees, we're going to read from Srimad Bhagavatam. And we're going to read the Chato Shloki. So, um, first of all, the the first one is uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 33. And so it is on the screen in front of you, I believe, if you can see that. So um, I think, can we say this together or should we be repetitious? Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do because it, they're actually very short. Let us just, we won't repeat every word, we'll repeat line by line. So I'll uh, say them first. So first of all, before reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, we should give our obeisances to the Srimad Bhagavatam, Veda Vyas, to all of our gurus, to Nara, the Muni, and to the Lord himself. So, um, uh, Namo, uh, so... Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayo Mudirayat Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. All right. So Aham Evasam Evagre Aham Evasam Evagre Nanyad Yat Shad Asat Param Nanyad Yat Shad Asat Param Paschad ahang yat etachcha. Paschad ahang aham yat etachcha. Yo vashishyeta so smyaham. Yo vashishyeta so smyaham. So this same file is in the text box, so later you can um, see its meaning. Um, but here we've got the translation. Okay, we'll put the translation. Dum, dum, dum. Sorry, dear devotees. Translation. So I'll read it in... Oh, we're all in English today, right? We don't need any translation. Okay, mm -hmm. translation <laughs> from the Sanskrit. Brahma. So this is Lord Narayan speaking to Lord Brahma. Brahma, it is I, the personality of Godhead, who was existing before the creation, when there was nothing but myself. Nor was there the material nature the cause of this creation, that which you see now, oh, cause of this creation period, that which you see now is also I, the personality of Godhead. And after annihilation, what remains will also be I. All right. Now the next verse will come back soon to mm -hmm. give a little more the next verse let us chant these four verses so 
First of all, rite ritam yat pratiyeta. Rite ritam yat pratiyeta. Na pratiyeta chatmani. Na pratiyeta chatmani. Tad vidyad atmano mayan. Tad vidyad atmano mayan. Yatabha so tata tamaha. Yatabha so yata tamaha. Yatabha so yata tamaha. And the translation. O Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, it has no reality. Know it as my illusory energy. That reflection which appears to be in darkness. That reflection which appears to be in darkness. So, O oh Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, if it is without relation to me, it has no reality. Know it as my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in darkness. Okay. Next verse. So this is the third of the chapter shloki. Jata mahanti bhutani. Jata mahanti bhutani. Bhute shuchava cheshvanu. Bhute shuchava cheshvanu. Pravishtanya pravishtrani. Pravishtanya pravishtrani. Tata teshu na teshvaham. Tata teshu na teshvaham. And this first translation. O Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos <clears throat> and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. Wonderful. Krishna, wonderful Narayan, and we'll come to find out in Srimad Bhagavatam that Narayan's original source is indeed Krishna. So, original Bhagavan is Krishna. Okay, now the last of the chapter for Shloki. Yata Mahanti Bhutani. Yata Mahanti Bhutani. Bhute Shuchava Cheshvanu. Pravishtam ya pravishtani. Did we just, we just read this one? Oh dear, I've got the same verse twice. A little bit of deja vu there. Um, so let's come back to the drawing board, as they say. So this, this is a different one? That's the fourth one. Yes. This is the fourth. Okay, so that file I put in, in the box, it's wrong. It's got the long, wrong last verse. But how can it be? Um, how can it be wrong? Okay. Let me see. Or oh, maybe I didn't scroll properly. One second. We're just doing a little engineering on this side of the world. Do you want to share the debates? Well, I could, but it's probably going to be in the wrong place now. I probably have to. Uh, I probably have to redo the screen. Uh, we're fine. We've got it here. Is it right? Look, I'm copying and pasting, and it's not copying. I have some complaint to make about the Macintosh computer. <laughs> And this happened when it turned to, to System 10, so everybody knows. System 9, it always copied when you press, when you press copy. System 10, sometimes you've got to like stab it a few times to get it going. 
Okay, I got it. It's, we've got it here. Don't worry. Everything is good. All right. There's always some challenge in life. We, we Kali Yuga. We, it's Kali Yuga. And as Guru Maharaj said yesterday, I mean, really, he said yesterday, in our morning uh, uh, listening, we went upstairs yesterday morning after Mongolati, heard from Guru Maharaj. And Guru Maharaj, he, described, he said about Kali Yuga. And in this Kali Yuga, where everything we do will face opposition, where everything is a challenge, then such and such, such. And really very nicely, Guru Maharaj put that there. And then I thought of the devotees when I read that yesterday. Oh, now what's happened? Okay, dear devotees, we're going to get to, to uh, chapter, sorry, the fourth of the verses. Don't worry. All right, we should be there now. Amazing. There it is. All right. So we did manage to copy and paste some of the basics on a computer right now. Okay, the fourth verse. Etavad eva jigyasyam. Etavad eva jigyasyam. Tatva jigyasunatmanaha. Tatva jigyasunatmanaha. Anvasya vyatirekabhyam. Anvaya vyatirekabhyam. Anvaya vyatirekabhyam. Yat syat sarvatra sarvada. Yat syat sarvatra sarvada. Anyhow, we'll clean up this document that I sent there so we don't have a double, like, um, a double verse repetition of the verse three. Anyway, we're, we're coming to, um, oh, I should stop the sharing, shouldn't I? So now, what I would like to do. Translate. Oh, thank you, Raja Sangri. <laughs> Making life a lot easier for us. <laughs> All right. So, what we'd like to do. Oh, so Shibad Dandi Maharaj arrived. Dandabad, Shibad Dandi Maharaj. Otherwise, but he didn't do translation before. What? He didn't do translation before. Oh, we didn't read the translation of number four. Oh, okay. Good job. You see, this is why we have to be with devotees. This is why we, we are with you all. Chapter number four translation. To show them, excuse me, to show them special mercy, I dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining... This is fun. This is Bhagavad Gita, Braja Sundari. You're, you're giving me a you're giving me a test to see if we're awake. No, because she's asking, Mahara. She's asking a question. Oh, okay. At so the beginning. We'll, okay, wait. We'll come to your question in a minute. <laughs> Let us try to successfully complete the chatu sloki first. One step at a time. Translation of the chat, fourth of the chatu sloki of Srimad Bhagavatam. A person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it up to, up to this in all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. Hare Krishna. And I could, if I... I'm able to do it. I just so that you do see that that was the translation. Oh, there we are. We're right there. A person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it up to this in all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. And this is the Lord who's revealed himself and talking to Narayan. Here, you are searching. You are searching. You've come to this. All right. So we were going to come to then and discuss the, the purport to this a little bit that Srila Prabhupada has given. And we do have also by Srila Guru Maharaj and by Srila Gurudev reference to these Chato Sloki of Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Um, but just now we hear that we do. We have a question from Raja Sundari. How this Chatur Shloki corresponds to the Shatur Shloki in the Bhagavad Gita? Well, for the purpose of now, because time is short, we can say the, these Chatur Shloki of Gita, which you kindly put in the chat box, <laughs> the Chatur Shloki of Bhagavad Gita, these are the seed verses of Bhagavad Gita. And the Chatur Shloki of Srimad Bhagavatam are the seed verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. So the Gita has come from that this what we understand is these seed verses, and the Srimad Bhagavatam has come from uh, these other seed verses. And I can mention, I mean, what comes in my mind as the answer right now is that the Lord, everything is coming from the Lord, but he is manifesting for a certain purpose in different way at a different time. And so the Gita has its um, specific uh, message and very uh, succinct description, the science of life, A to Z, or A to Z, for those of you who live on the far west of the world. So A to Z, or A to Z, is in Bhagavad Gita. And Srimad Bhagavatam, it is very much uh, expanded. So sometimes we hear that the, from after the Bhagavad Gita, then we get Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, so that we can get more fully what Krishna is giving in Bhagavad Gita. But in the garden, you can see, as we have experience in Vila Govinda, that a little bit of a different seed it's all jiva souls, it's all the Lord's energy also. The jiva soul, nothing is separate from the Lord. And then from there, we're getting like different, different results from a different seed. But the, everywhere there is life, so variety. So the Chattu Shloki of Gita have given Gita, and the Chattu Shloki of Srimad Bhagavatam have given Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and I mean, if we want to go into an analytical study, then we'll probably call on Mahayogi Prabhu to give an analytical study, and he'll probably do it very well. Um, but this is where we are today, because we just want to briefly cover the question, because you asked it. But we do want to come to the Srimad Bhagavatam um, and these Chattu Shloki. So my, I have a question, and that is for... Uh, Purushottam Prabhu, they, when they arrived off the plane, all the way from the aeroplane back to Vila Govinda Ashram, then in the car, they were discussing about the Chatur Shloki and, <coughs> and the purports of Srila Prabhupada. So I'm coming to Purushottam Prabhu. We have in front of us here the first verse and its purport. We have the second verse and its purport. We've got each one actually even a little organized in front of us, believe it or not. And uh, so I'm coming to Purushottam Prabhu to ask him what stood out for them while flying on the plane, landing and coming to Vila Govinda from the Chattu Shloki purports. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, Maharaj, like I said, the... Uh... You know, these are the essential verses. So it's like, uh, for me, it's something that I can, I can memorize them and repeat them. And uh, over time, you know, kind of like Gurudev says, like with the Gayatri Mantra, you offer your whole existence to the, to the mantra and it will, it will reciprocate and, uh, you know, reveal itself to you accordingly. So that's kind of my attitude uh, towards the, the shlokis here. Um, and to be honest, on the spot, I don't, I don't know, I can't say what uh, stood out to me with Prabhupada's purports, other than the fact that they're essential and obviously extremely um, helpful to get context of the shlokas themselves. Um, and just remembering, yeah, Divya and I being excited, you know, reading and, and making notes, highlighting on the, uh, the computer, the parts that stand out. Um, but I don't have my notes in front of me, so it's hard. I could go get them, though. Oh, yes, why not? Okay, <laughs> okay he's going to run to 
run to the brahmachari quarters. We've got brahmachari quarters, we're an ashram. Mm -hmm. He's going to run to the brahmachari quarters and get his notes. All right. But uh, one thing that Divya was saying, because we, we met them and they came in, they came in at, at the gate and then came in, etc. And Divya Shakti, she was still bubbling along with these uh, purports of Srila Prabhupada. And her comments were how these verses, Srila Prabhupada is pointing out in every way how it's all about I, someone is speaking. It is not a zero, it's not a, a, a disembodied sound from the sky or something like this. It is the, the personality. And these four verses are stressing that personality of Godhead, personality of Godhead, personality of Godhead. And how Srila Prabhupada in these commentaries of the verses, then he is showing how you can you cannot give with any honestly honesty give any other meaning to the Chatu Shloki than I. This is Krishna. This is Narayan. That I, the personality of Godhead, am behind everything within the universe, created, not created, everything, and. He is not only behind it, he makes it and then, you know, like a potter makes a pot and then gives it away and then he's not anymore connected with it. But he's within everything that he's created. And so this personality aspect of the Supreme Lord, this was what uh, Dibya Shakti was coming in, bubbling, bubbling about. She was very like radiant and enthusiastic and in her lively way telling us with Purushottam Prabhu, and I'm happy to hear he highlighted those points because we can we can hear from from him some of those points. But I did myself. I read the day before yesterday. I read uh, the whole of the the purports of these verses too. And I have to say that Srila Prabhupada is so uh, um, like uh, absorbing. He absorbs you in his. Uh, explanation and you just have to like nod your head and agree the heart give a big tick mark and agree i there look jayadev prabhu's put a, a very uh, appropriate comment right here <laughs> both chato shloki they begin with aham okay braja sundari <laughs> okay. oh here's paramananda who also he is paramananda and our Shibad Dandi Maharaj, they're all probably very able to say the, some connection. If you see the, the uh, question of Raja Sundari uh, Maharaj, how is the Chatra Shloki of the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, how do they correspond? Anyway, you, Parmander and, and Dandi Maharaj can meditate on that for a short while. And here we have. Oh my goodness, look at the right, look at the size of the writing on his tablet. Show, <laughs> close. <laughs> I thought, I thought it was only old people who did that. <laughs> the young ones also do that. Let's just see. A little too big. No, I like big writing. That kind of works for me. And Iravati, welcome. Madhava Lati, Madhavi, Lata Devidasi, welcome. And Dana, welcome. And Radha Sundari, we welcome. Oh, Nirupama, yes, Nirupama, welcome. So we're just welcoming those who we haven't, we've welcomed everyone else before. Oh, Nirupama's in the kitchen already. Dying. So what have you got highlighted? So Purushottam Prabhu was coming with some highlights from, uh, highlights from his tablet, but from this Chattu Shloki. So this is, uh, there's some highlights from the second of the four. So text 34, uh, this is kind of a, a somewhat famous expression here, that reflection which appears to be in darkness. And I find that to be a pretty mystical statement and uh, interesting. And uh, it says here. Um, this is Srila Prabhupada saying. Srila Prabhupada's okay. purport, yeah. It's talking about uh, Daivi Maya and Mahamaya or Yoga Maya and Mahamaya. 
It says the right conclusion of dovetailing everything in relationship with the Lord is called yoga maya or the energy of union. And the wrong conception of detaching a thing from its relationship with the Lord is called the Lord's daivi maya or maha maya. Both the mayas also have connections with the Lord because nothing can exist without being related to him. As such, the wrong conception of de detaching relationships from the Lord is not false, but illusory. I think it's just a fine distinction to make, uh, that the Vaishnavas make. Um, that we say the world is not false, it's temporary and it's an illusion, but the material world is not false. And the illusory energy has two phases of existence, namely the covering influence and the throwing influence. Yes, this also struck me. I had to read that like three times when I read the, the commentary. Mm -hmm. You can read it again. And it says, <clears throat> the Prabhupada says, the illusory energy has two phases of existence, namely the covering influence and the throwing influence. And then we'll hear what throwing is, I think. Uh, so yes. by the throwing influence of the illusory, uh, excuse me, by the throwing influence, the illusory energy throws the living entities into the darkness of ignorance. And by the covering influence, she covers the eyes of men with a poor fund of knowledge about the existence of the Supreme Person who enlightened the Supreme Individual Living Being, Brahma. Jai, that's also one of my, my like, points, which I stopped on and thought about very much. I like this idea too, because I think, you know, we hear about uh, the outward carrying current and the inward carrying current. Mahamaya is outward carrying. It's a, it's a centrifugal um, force and the, you, you know, you get wrapped up in it and it throws you and you get you covered too. So a little, you get heavy and tamasic and you get thrown. And then yoga maya is the inward carrying current. I love those two kind of meditation of those two energies. Gurudev would say the two waves are always flowing simultaneously, these two, these two energies. And Gurudev told on the same theme, another example, that is there are two currents. And at the moment we are caught in the, the downward carrying current, the Maya current. And, he, and Gurudev is saying, we only have to allow ourselves to enter into and be taken by the upward carrying current, the current that's taking us home. It's like a, a branch in a, a river, something like this. One way is going here, one way is going here. And at the moment, we are caught up in this downward carrying current, like a spiral. But mm -hmm. we need to, to get into the current of the river and be taken of the upward flowing river. And all of this is coming to back to you, back to you, back to you. Devotion, devotion, devotion. The holy name, the holy name, the holy name. The Vaishnavas, the Vaishnavas, the Vaishnavas. We must allow ourselves to be put at their disposal. And that like the current of the river will be taken away. You can't fight against the current. You go to recently, our, our Keshavananda Prabhu was in Rishikesh. And anybody in Rishikesh knows you can't fight with the current of the river if the current <laughs> takes you. You're either going to go with it or you're going to swim horizontally to the current and get to the shore. But we don't want to go back to the shore. We are in such a current that we want to be taken to the, all the way to the upper world. And then here Prabhupada continues, it says <clears throat> a little later on, although the reflectory energy of the Lord displays various illusions to the eyes of persons with a poor fund of knowledge, the same person knows clearly that the Lord can act even from far, far beyond our vision by his different energies, just as fire can diffuse heat and light from a distant place. And I like that as a, as a visual, as a meditation, to know that there's gradation of the Lord's energies and that we're situated in a particular jurisdiction of his energies, and, but he is still acting from far away. And that through understanding the reflection, we can meditate on the Lord in separation from the Lord.
An uh, invitation for Paramanand Guru and Sripadandi Maharaj. You're probably bursting with some comments at this point. <laughs> Raj, I'm always amazed how it is we speak on one subject and it just continues on in a different place with a different group of Vaishnavas, but on the same subject. Because really today morning um, program was dedicated to that particular subject. Wow. And we're reading Reveal Truth and we just continue on our reading. It wasn't like a picked or selected because we heard about Chatur Shloki, but that current creates by the heart, cre created by the heart of the devotees. We, we actually somehow we have access to that divine ether. I don't know how to explain it. Like I was telling you the story when I was so, me and Kalachand, we were so amazed by how, how is that possible? Because every time we are reading Chaitanya Chiritamrita or discussing something in the morning, then after that, right after that, we go to Sri Goswami Maharaj. She just keeps going on about the same. He continues the same subject. Sometimes quoting the same verses were just quoted. And at some point it happens once, twice, three times, four times, five times. I'm like, Kala, there must be a hidden camera here somewhere in the temple. He's watching us all the time. It's impossible that it continues like that, like every single time. So I am uh, choose a moment and I'm kind of, you know, in a joking way, ask Maharaj, do you have any hidden cameras? You know, somebody, you know, what are you talking about? I said, you know, this thing happened. And he was like, oh yes, I also observed that. Somehow it's in the ether. And we're all getting connected to that. I think you even so, searched for a hidden camera one time, didn't you? <laughs> you thought I, We did with Kalachan, we did. We searched the whole temple, I'm telling you. Like we pulled the plugs, we opened the closets, everything behind the altar, a little bit in the altar without disturbing the deities. Who knows, you know, these days. But anyhow, so it wasn't there. So he had another camera installed, but not the physical camera. But on, and I'm sure Shripad Dandi Maharaj will elaborate more on the Raja Sundari's question about the relationship between Chatur Shloki of Srimad Bhagavatam and Chatur Shloki of Bhagavad Gita. And really in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's basically installing the truth. Who is, who is the boss? Who is the source of everything? Who is Krishna? And it continues on. So it's mostly on Krishna and his energies, how everything is created. So it's right in the beginning of Bhagavatam, it's the second canto. But then we come to Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad Gita is more of a personal kind of a, a scripture. It's Krishna speaking to his dear friend. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't, uh, he must mention something more personal, dear to his heart, to his dear friend Arjuna. So in Chatur Shloki of Bhagavad Gita, even though it uh, starts in a very similar way, aha, me, myself, aham sarvasya prabhavo matak sarvam pravartate ti prabhavajantamam buddha bhava saman vitaham achitamam gata pranabodayantish parasparam katayantish chavam nishatish tushyanticha. So Krishna just goes on. And without the Vaishnava, it's impossible to perceive what is in these four shlokas. But actually, there is an ocean of nectar. And only someone like Guru Maharaj can reveal that. A Vaishnava who is residing in that will can actually tell what Krishna means. Because Krishna is putting his heart in front of Arjuna. He wants to help him. But he's not, whatever he is saying has... Um, there's many different possibilities, infinite quantity of different possibilities in his wheels revealed in uh, his words and his verses. So here he is describing his relationship. So, I, okay, I'm, I'm the Supreme Personality of God here, and all the Jiva souls are coming from me, and somehow they're related to me, and there's a material energy, illusory energy, Niti body, Niti city, etc., etc., etc. But then he describes the devotees, those who are dear to him in the verses of Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Shloki. He goes, let's say, just more personal. He speaks about devotional relationship, about the rasas, how he reciprocates love with his devotees, and devotees reciprocating love with Krishna. That's what he's talking about. And so he just continue more and more in that direction, going deeper on that level. And Srila Guru Maharaj reveals that he's actually, ultimately, he's describing the glories of the residents of Braja. And particular gopis, and in particular Shimati Ratarani, but it is all very hidden 
too. It's not obviously revealed like in Srimad Bhagavatam, but we'll not find obvious uh, mentioning of um, Shimati Radharani, her glories, glories of her seva, how much Krishna indebted, what Krishna feels about, uh, uh, and etc., etc., etc. So this, this is all hidden. But in Bhagavad Gita, in a way, it's hidden, but, and yet it is personal. And then we have a wonderful book, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the Illuminations by Srila Guru Maharaj. And he tells us, he actually opens the eye of everyone on what Krishna means when it comes to that. And the culmination of Bhagavad Gita. And then it will make sense when Krishna is saying, Sarvad Harma Parichi Jamama Kam Sharanam Varaja, Man Manab Bhava Man Bhakta Man Neji Man Namaskuru. The first verse before the Sarvad Harma Parichi Jamama. Why we have to give it up? Why did you tell that? So Krishna is fair. He's giving different choices to Arjuna. But while he's speaking about devotion, his heart goes to the devotees of Raja. He cannot not to mention about their glories, but he doesn't want to do it openly. So it is there encoded and obvious and revealed to one who possess devotion. In particular line, in particular type of devotion. It is obvious to that personality like Guru Maharaj. And I, we were talking this morning, not to take for granted the fact that we are in line, we're somehow we're children of these fathers. Maybe we have no idea about the rasas in our, uh, the way Shnava is aspiring in our line, relationship with Krishna, they aspire for in our line, but we're born into this line. We're born into that family. And so we shouldn't take it for granted. And just consider yourself very fortunate because they will always talk about the glories of Braja and the residence of Braja and the love of residence of Braja for Krishna as the Supreme, the love of the gopis as the Supreme, the love of Shimata Radharani as the Supreme. And that's the aspiration of our devotional family, our fathers and guardians. We are worshiping their aspiration and you know, begging them that one day maybe we can be useful and they may engage us in that seva. And to get that qualification, again, where do we get that qualification? By their grace, we were speaking yesterday about it. They can see that potential and they can grow that potential in us. They can recover that, rediscover that potential and engage us if we let ourselves to be engaged, like Maharaj just said, if we let ourselves to be taken by the flow of that current, stay in that current, everything will be fine. The current will take us to the, our, our ultimate destination. It will take us there. But if we try to fight it, we will be washed ashore and we will be crawling again on our four in the mud of misconceptions on the shores. And maybe we just go deeper and deeper and we lose so much time again. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to get lost, but it's very difficult in a way. It's easy and difficult to stay in the current. Why it is difficult? Because we have difficulty with following very simple principles. If we can really follow that, wear it around the neck, Maharaj. String it on a string of holy name. Each verse, each word of that uh, verse, Mahaprabhu's verse. Wear it around the neck so we can be reminded every day. Then everything will be fine. We will stay in that current. If you're humble, if you're tolerant, you are not fighting anything. You let yourself to be taken. And we already have that fortune. So why we have to fight our own fortune? Waste it. We can just apply a simple logic. We also spoke about, you know, how in Vaishnava philosophy and ontology, a simple logic can make so much sense. And Saraswati Thakur, really, uh, he used a lot of logic in his Guru Maharaj, Gavinda Maharaj, everyone. Prabhupada, Swami Prabhupada. Anyhow, Maharaj, I would like to, uh, Dandi Maharaj, if I Dandi Maharaj, to elaborate more on the relation of Chatur Shloki in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and whatever he wants to say about it. Yes, Maharaj, Rajalsta, please. No, 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 no. Yes, it's uh, very wonderful. So, so much revelations from the heart of devotees, from the pure, pure heart, and very valuable from Shila Masud Maharaj, Shpat Parmanda Prabhu, Prashotam Prabhu. So it's so many revealed, and every devotee makes it even sweeter. So, this uh, four shlokas, they 
directly transferring from the lotus mass of the world to the Brahma and uh, both Четвертый локус от Бхагавад Гита, чем от Бхагавад, там, directly words of uh, Lord himself. Actually, it's very rare in the religious world that Lord himself says uh, something very uh, <coughs> substantial to the, his, his devotees, because it actually depends on who these devotees are. Like we see, we see here is uh, Brahma himself, and so uh, after hearing uh, this words of, of the law, um, one time we, we don't know historically in which order uh, it, it, it was, but uh, we, we know that uh, actually Lord Brahma made Brahma Sankita. Which we also can consider as a pure a commentary to this Chatur Slopas of Shimon of Shimon Bhagavatam. Then in Brahma Samhita, the same truths are explain, uh, explained in a very deep way. And uh, so so many versions, you see. This. <coughs> So it's a beautiful shastras. Bhagavan Gita, Shimon Bhagavatam, Brahma Samhita, it's amazing shastras. It's nothing to compare with the shastras, with this, with this holy, holy, holy scriptures. So it's nothing to compare uh, because it's uh, very, 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 it's, uh, very exclusional revelation. Like, for example, Jiva Goswami said, uh, actually, uh, Shimon Bhagavatam. Uh, Bhagavad Purana uh, itself uh, can be expressed in one verse called Paribhada Sutra. Stress upon this point, this Krishna to Bhagavan Svayam, this Bhagavan himself says it. Not, not some avatar, right? like in other scriptures, not some manifestation of the Lord, but Bhagavan himself. Say this. This Chatur Slokas, Ahamavasa Malagriyas, etc. The Bhagavan himself, Krishna himself, Supreme Personality of God, its sweetest absolute, uh, Rasaraj. He himself says say, say this. And uh, then inspiring Brahma composed this Brahma Samhita, a beautiful, amazing Brahma Samhita with so much uh, revelations, so, so much. Mm -hmm valuable truth in Brahma Samhita. And uh, actually, Brahma described the supreme uh, abode of, of the Lord in the, in the last verse. Not, not last, but uh, one of the last verses. Then, <clears throat> the, this uh, adobe of coals uh, and uh, milk and uh, uh, goddess, goddess of, of, of fortune, which, uh, he means Gopi, uh, this uh, divine abode of, of the Lord, and that in uh, which uh, holy scriptures we can read about this. It's amazing. It's, it's a very special holy scripture. Um, we also have Krishna Charitavrita of Krishna Hirashka and uh, uh, in Chitanya Charitavrita, it's not enough four shlokas. So we have 14 shlokas in Chitanya Charitavrita. The uh, essence of Chitanya Charitavrita, but it's uh, so deep, uh, so, so deep and so long. So we have 14 shlokas so for the essence of Chitanya Charitavrita. So the, this uh, uh, short uh, explanations and four shlokas and Shivan Bhagavatam even in one shloka, that, um, they help us uh, to um, concentrate on the uh, essence of this Holy, holy Scriptures. So this, uh, because uh, actually Brahma hearing these four shlokas and uh, uh, it's Shimon Bhagavatam. 
And uh, first, the type of Shemot Bhagavatam was in four slokas. Then Brahma said to Narada, it was ten slokas. And Narada then spoke uh, to Vyasa, and Vyasa to Shukadev, Shukadev Parikshit, and Sutta Goswami in Nevisharanya Forest. They, <clears throat> with uh, some sages, they already have uh, 18,000 of slokas. It's uh, not limit. And, um, we, we can say it. Shukadev to Paikshit, Matre Rishi to Udala, etc. But in now, now times, Shila Govindam Maharaj to his disciples, and then Shila Masud Maharaj to his disciples, and, 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 and listen this. Then it's continuing revelation. It's not, not interrupt. So it's not only uh, 18 South of Mashlokas, and uh, not uh, even. Uh, four four shlokas, but uh, on limited revelations or uh, limited revelations of uh, Vaishnavas. So 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 beautiful words about love. This is uh, all we can call Shaman Bhagavata. Bhagavata Katha. It's called Bhagavata Katha. So it's uh, very interesting that uh, every shloka is uh, highest in itself and unlimited. <clears throat> infinite every slope. So it's not just four verses, it's four type of infinite revelation, of very beautiful revelations in, in every slope. <clears throat> so it's very amazing, very, very, very beautiful revelation. It's, we, we can say it, it's uh, nothing to compare with is very special holy scripture, Shimon Bhagavatam. And Bhagavad Gita and Chitain Chitain. So, so, so special holy scriptures. Uh, and to help us uh, um, to overview the meaning of the holy scriptures, we have this short explanations. But uh, actually, it's uh, not so simple because uh, it's uh, Lord Himself express uh, his heart in this uh, in, in this type of four verses of holy scriptures so it's uh, <clears throat> our treasure um, and um, sometime we, we can remember the shlokas and sometime during the day suddenly some meaning come to us and we remember about the Lord, about this about, about his energy and this help us to live our spiritual life. Jai. So somehow the time has passed by quickly, but um, we, with your permission, and if you're happy to do so, we'll continue next time because we do have also from Guru Maharaj, from Guru Dev, some uh, comments on these verses. And they've quoted these verses in different places, as we see. They're all in Prapana Jeevan Amritam too. And uh, to be continued, because we have, um, we, I think we can't, we, I mean, we can't say we've covered everything today. And let's see whether next week we do actually have Dibhi Shakti with us too. Um, so we also have some another living bubbly enthusiasm about these four verses. Mm -hmm. It is by their Purushottam and Divya Shakti's interaction and then sharing uh, that we've been uh, encouraged to give a little attention to these, but to be continued because really, and I do have some um, excerpts here from Guru Marsh and Guru Dev, as well as to continue from Srila Prabhupada. And from Braja Sundari to everyone, now I understand that I need to print these slokas and put them in my heart, Acha, so I can <laughs> see them during the day and think about them. <laughs> okay. And it is good for us to learn these four verses as we have in our back to back to basics learned Ahang Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sahavan Prabhatite Iti Temam, etc. The four uh, seed verses of Gita we have learned. You can revise if you are afraid I may ask you to repeat them. Okay, they're good to revise, so we have them in our heart. 
let us try to learn these slokas too. And they are short, they're not long slokas. Um, but I, I, still, again, I can encourage that if you haven't, and even if you have read the, the um, purports this during this last few days since we mentioned, now a few days before we come to uh, our next gathering um, on Thursday, which is four days' time, then it, it's very sweet. If we can learn them, try and learn them, the verses, but uh, to read through the purports of Srila Prabhupada, it's so much emphasis on the supreme personality of Godhead. Everything is wonderful. And actually, we're, um, we're over time. There are lots of things we can kind of say, illustrate, and sort of reflections that came this week. Um, but there is wonder everywhere. And uh, there are some examples from our life this week about that. But the properties of just cells, the property of atoms, the property of different uh, elements of nature that have come into the world. Everything is amazing, and nothing is separate from Krishna. Anything that appears to be separate from him is illusion. It's the illusion of our eyes. It is something wrong in our vision. So our life is to clean up our vision. So our vision needs to be cleaned by following the process, chanting Hare Krishna without offense, in the mood of service, and keeping our head at the lotus feet of Nittai and Gauranga, of Guru and Gauranga, and worshipping whatever glimpses we have of the upper world through Srimad Bhagavatam, through Guru Maharaj Gurudev, about that upper world, keeping that on our head and not letting our imagination wander into the fine pastimes of the Lord. So, yes, we're very happy to be with you all. And... Again, we didn't give everybody a chance to say something. But if on if after four days you put up your hand and say, yes, I read the, all the purports too, then I think when we see some hands up, we can say, okay, like here, some highlights, you can put some highlights in, highlights in that jumped out at you. And we can perhaps come to the third of the, the verses and perhaps the fourth when we meet again uh, on our next Back to Basics. And special days are coming. Kartik is coming. Lots of things are going to come, but too many things to be able to say in in less in minus nine minutes because we run over time already. So, dear devotees, happy to be with you all. And Dana. And just as we have as we have Dana with us, I just want to say Dana we here to give you all assistance and encouragement. If we can be of assistance and encouragement, you can catch us now after a few minutes. And uh, we want to give assistance and encouragement to everybody because Krishna consciousness is, is the solution to everything in this world. It's the solution to everything in the upper world. So let us try along with Lord Brahma. Guru Mahar said, we're sitting in the same class with Lord Brahma. This is what Mahaprabhu has given to the world. So, along with Lord Brahma, let us search out for reality, the beautiful. Sri Krishna, reality, the beautiful. Jai Shri Guru Om Vishnu Phar Shri Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Shri Bhakti Rakhok Shri Dhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. And Jai Shri Prabhupada Shri A.C. Bhakti Ranta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Bhagavan Shri Bhakti Siranta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. The God of Shodas Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai. Shri Sakti Tananda Bhakti Vino Thakur. The actual origin, the foundation from which everything has come of this wave of Krishna consciousness. Shri Bhakti Vino Thakur Ki Jai. Shri Upanuga Guru Vaga Ki Jai. Yeah. Present day Shri Chaitanya Saraswata Acharya Vrinda Ki Jai, right. Nama Chakra Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, yeah. all the assembled devotees Ki Jai, Shri yeah. Padandi Maharaj Ki Jai, Shri Padaramanand yeah. Ki Jai, all of the senior yeah. and all devotees Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Paymanandi, Hari Hari. Hari, 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 Hari. A special dandavat from Mahayogi Prabhu and Shyamakanti Devi Dasi Maharaj. Okay, special dandavats. To you, to you both and to all who are with us on Facebook today. Somehow I didn't turn on Facebook. Please excuse. And very happy to know that you're there. And please 
know that we are listening to all of your Gita and talks and really that's a classic selection of Mahayogi Prabhu. And uh, we did also suggest that Raja Sundari, can, she can put this question about the two sections of Chatra Slokas to your good self too. And we'd love to be, hear that illumination. Dandavas, dear devotees, permission to go. I can leave you all together, but we do oh, have... Maharaj, some... just give me a moment to say something to Purushottam Prabhu there. Oh, yes, here he is. Srila, Srila Goswami Maharaj just came in the morning and he is also getting ready, making sure every, everyone will be comfortable here. So he's saying there's a plenty of seva waiting for this brahmachari. <laughs> yes, good. There's music to my ears. Parmananda, I know you'll translate that uh, uh, in concrete terms. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Actual concrete terms. <laughs> <laughs> Pranams Maharaj, thank you so much. Okay, lots more things to say, but no more time to say it this week. Dandavat, see you all very soon and have successful days, hours, moments, every moment until we meet again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Isn't time